Khabib Nurmagomedov saying that he wants to fight GSP in his final fight in the UFC. It seems as though GSP is having second thoughts about moving down to the lightweight division. In a recent interview with BT Sport, he went on to say, I'm 39 years old. I don't think I could go to 155 pounds without my performance being compromised. Khabib is fighting at 155, but I believe he's heavier than me. He walks around a heavier weight. He's younger than me, so he can fluctuate his weight better. Khabib Nurmagomedov responded back on an ESPN MMA post saying, GSP knows. Conor McGregor recently reflected on his boxing match with Floyd Mayweather. He posted this on his Instagram with the caption, Three years ago today I carried Floyd for his final boxing match. Wow, time flies when he's stacking cheddar. Happy retirement champ. A fan sent Stipe Miocic this question on his Q&A on his Instagram saying, Which one is harder fight for you, Jones or Nganu? Stipe Miocic responded back saying, Francis isn't exciting to me. Already put a 25 minute clinic on how to beat him. Want a new challenge. Would love to box. Francis Ngannou responded back saying, Is this your way of avoiding me? Michael Bisping on the Believe in Me podcast speaks on the upcoming middleweight title fight between Israel Adesanya versus Paolo Costa. I'm going to go with, obviously being a former middleweight myself, Israel Adesanya taking on Costa. Barachinha, they're talking a little bit. Izzy is uh, an incredible fighter. His technique is incredible. In fact, he came up with a very interesting uh, take a couple of days ago. He said, yeah, this fight's got it all. you got the skinny guy with the technique taking on the big roided out monster or something to that effect. He said, I'm going to be like Bruce Lee out there. It's going to be an example of martial arts, the smaller, skinnier guy taking out the big, strong one. I think that's an incredible fight because Costa is the big guy. He is stronger, but my God, he's a an animal in there. He knows how to fight. He's a big dude. He's got incredible punching power, good takedown defense, and has a good gas tank as well for a guy that has so much muscle. And, and of course, Izzy, I mean, he's on a roll right now. If you look at his resume, you know, I mean, he's beating Yoel Romero, Robert Whittaker, Jacare Souza, no, not Jacare, uh, Derek Brunson, Paolo Costa, not Paolo Costa, Thiago, uh, Brad Tavares. He's got a very, very impressive resume. And if he can go through Costa as well, if he beats Costa, I don't see anybody beating him anytime soon. Filho da mãe já tá? Amor, cinco. Já na perda de peso, já na perda de peso, já porra, fortalecendo os ligamentos. Filha da mãe. Bora. Robbie Lola at the UFC ESPN 33 pre-fight interview speaks on his preparation going into his fight with Neil Magny. Uh, I've been looking to get back for a while, but it uh, just couldn't get anything together. And then they kind of offered this one on like a few weeks notice. And I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to fight. So it is what it is. Uh, let's just go fight. Right now, I'm just competing one step at a time. It's like you can't, you have to get past this fight, showcase your skills, and, and let, let people know who you are. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, training partners did a great job of getting me ready for this fight. Coaches put together a good game plan and had enough time to uh, make sure I'm, I'm ready to go. So, everyone at Sanford has done a great job with me, and I'm excited to get out there. Darren, I'm only number two because you're number one, Mush. Congratulations, Darren Till, the number one at MTK Global. Anthony Smith on the Luke Thomas show says that he will jump on any opportunity to fight Luke Rockhold. Yeah, yeah, as you know, as much as I talk badly about Luke Rockhold in the media, to my friends, to, to almost anybody who would listen, <laughs> I've never said that he's not good at fighting. Luke Luke Rockhold is a badass. He, he's he, he's very good. He's a dangerous striker. He's got a really dangerous rear side hands and kicks. Uh, and his top game in jujitsu is legendary. Like people talk about that in the gym. I've never rolled with him, but I know plenty of people that have. And they they almost all of them say that he is a monster on top. So he, I don't I don't want I don't want that, I don't want that to get twisted that because I don't like him and I talk trash about him that I don't think that he's good. Uh, I, I think that if he could, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a, if he could take a shot and not fall asleep every time, Luke Rockhold is still one of the most dangerous guys in the world. So I, I would love the opportunity to, to compete a, a, against a former champion, against someone that's as good as Luke Rockhold. And I'd love to beat up someone that I don't like that much. So 
uh, I will always jump at an opportunity to, to, to fight Luke Rockhold any chance I get. Good there, right? You're doing pretty good, you know? And Ray Longo on the Anakin Florin podcast gives his thoughts on Frankie Edgar's performance against Pedro Munoz. Well, look, I think you said the word inspiring. I mean, at 38 years old, I think we got, we got to put in perspective what he did is phenomenal. And just eating those leg kicks, you see him hopping, limping out of the ring, how he held it together for 25 minutes. We can never take away the grit and determination of Frankie Edgar. You know what I mean? I look, it, it's power versus speed. It depends on what you like. Munoz would throw one shot. Frankie would come back with three. Yeah. Uh, with the exception of the leg kicks, that was the tempo of the fight, I would think, right, Kenny? I mean, it just seemed like, any, you know, he made Pedro miss big. I, I, I think they both fought well. I really do. I think it's one of those fights where they fought. Neither guy really lost the fight. Frankie for his age and everything else, dropping down for the first time for Bantamweight, I just think that phenomenal. I mean, mm -hmm. I he, you can make a case for both guys. That That's the way I look at it, you know? And it, it's a shame. I think, you know, unfortunately, like, I, you know, I like Frank, I like those guys. I, I think he won the battle, but lost the war in a certain regard, though, because the guy's getting older. I mean, I watched that, that the countdown when he's talking about his kids. You gotta love the guy, he's a great dad. This is a, that was, he took a lot of punishment, and I don't think I want to see that going forward. But Frankie's a fighter, and uh, you know he definitely deserved the, the win. But I could see where Pedro's going nuts. It's a, it's a crazy fight to score, but what a great fight for the fans. I mean, awesome at the end of the fight. day, that was it. It was a a great five round fight. He's got more key value, and I think he he owned up to everything he's ever done in his career. I think I think it's fascinating what he did, considering his age and dropping down for the first time. You know, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. What? What'd you say? You can't smile at that?